When John Ritter passed away September 11, 2003, his wife was devastated. At the time, he was married to his second wife, Amy Yazbek. Today, after nearly two decades, Amy claims she still has a hard time dating because being with other men only makes her miss John more. But the widow did have a romantic fling with the lawyer she tried to help her out with the wrongful death suit that resulted from her husband's passing. Join Facts First as we explore how John Ritter's widow still hasn't moved on. Or has she? After nearly two decades, Amy Yazbek is still having a hard time getting over the death of her late husband. The 60-year-old actress has been married one time over the course of her life, and that was to television star John Ritter. The two were only married from 1999 to 2003, with the marriage ending as a result of John's passing. However, they had known each other for nearly a decade prior to tying the knot. Some wonder why Amy hasn't remarried after nearly 20 years. According to the actress herself, she's afraid to move on completely from John because interacting with other men simply makes her miss her late husband. Amy Yazbek claimed recently she doesn't date, but there is a man that she's been pictured several times alongside in the years since John's passing. Amy and John first met during the production of the 1990 film Problem Child. Dennis Dugan directed the film, and John and Amy met during a table read at the director's house. The two quickly hit it off, and the relationship only grew stronger over the course of filming. Problem Child was meant to be the movie that helped John transition from the small screen to the big screen. Though it wasn't a huge hit with critics, it was popular enough that a sequel was immediately rushed into production, with both John and Amy reprising their roles. Though they could be seen in 1991's Problem Child 2, they chose not to return for the made-for-television sequel, Problem Child 3, Junior in Love. While John and Amy hit it off on the set of Problem Child, it wasn't until years later that they tied the knot. Over the course of the 90s, the pair continued dating before making things official in 1999. A year before their 1999 wedding, John and Amy had their first and only child together, named Noah Ritter. John had a good relationship with Noah during the first years of her life, but sadly wasn't around to watch her come of age. On Noah's fifth birthday, John Ritter passed away, seemingly out of nowhere. This video is brought to you by Established Titles. Have you ever been interested in being a lord or a lady? With Established Titles, now you can become one. For real. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. You can even get it on your dating profiles. You can purchase title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. With the purchase, you'll receive an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our little Facts First kingdom. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, to support global reforestation efforts. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale, plus if you use the code FV10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash FV10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. According to Amy Yazbeck, the thing that helped her connect with Ritter was the television actor's comedic skills. The two were performing together in a film, and John was the much more experienced performer. He helped Amy feel more confident about her performance in Problem Child. The two would get together and watch classic comedy films, and this is how they bonded romantically. Sadly, the good thing that they had came to an end September 11, 2003. At that time, John was busy working on his new hit show, Eight Simple Rules. He hadn't had a successful sitcom since Three's Company, and he was incredibly grateful for the opportunity to become a big-name, small-screen star once again. Eight Simple Rules came on the air in 2002. Sadly, John passed away only one year into production. The show continued after John's passing, but audiences clearly missed John. The actor fell ill during the filming of one episode and was rushed to the hospital. Once there, the doctors first said he was having a heart attack, but the affliction he suffered from was an aortic dissection, which was something a bit more obscure. As a result of the misdiagnosis, John passed away relatively quickly. It also inspired his widow to file a wrongful death lawsuit against the doctors in question. Unbelievably, it seems Amy ended up finding love with the lawyer she hired to help her out. When John was being treated for his supposed heart attack at the hospital, he allegedly asked one of the doctors for a second opinion, but the doctor turned down his plea because he said there was no time. 
The doctor truly believed a heart attack was what John was suffering from, and there was no time to waste in treating it. Sadly, it wasn't a heart attack, and he ended up passing away after being wrongfully treated. After John's death, Amy attempted to sue the hospital where he died for nearly $70 million. That sum included medical costs, as well as all of the television earning that John missed out on as a result of his passing. Despite the fact that the misdiagnosis was certainly culpable in John's death, Amy didn't receive the money she was looking for, but she did receive something else from the lawyer who helped her. Amy has claimed she hasn't been that anxious to date in the nearly two decades since John's passing. However, there is some photographic evidence that flies in the face of the 60-year-old widow's statements. To help her out with the wrongful death lawsuit, Amy hired a lawyer named Michael Plonsker. Years after the matter came to an end, Amy and Michael started showing up together at social events. The two were photographed together multiple times, and Amy even posted these photographs on her social media with the caption, Power Couple. It seems Amy and Michael were a romantic item for at least a couple of years. It remains unclear why Amy doesn't like to bring up the fact that she dated Michael Plonsker when talking about her late husband. She still insists she's not ready to move on from John's death, so perhaps she feels guilty for the brief period of time she spent with Michael. If Amy Yazbek's words are to be believed, then she and Michael Plonsker are no longer an item. But the truth of the actress's statements regarding her love life remains to be seen. Amy and Michael were first spotted while attending the Comedy Central roast of James Franco in 2013. Michael hasn't just been pictured with Amy, but also with Noah Ritter. This suggests that whatever was or is still going on between Michael and Amy is more than just a casual fling. Still, it's hard to know the truth given Amy's continued claims that she hasn't dated at all since the death of her husband. Even though Amy was unsuccessful in her wrongful death lawsuit, she's still been able to make positive things come about from the fatal misdiagnosis of her husband. After John's death, Amy founded the John Ritter Foundation for Aortic Health. The actress spreads awareness about the fluke affliction that did her husband in. She believes that by spreading awareness about aortic dissection, she can help prevent misdiagnoses like the one that led to John's death. The day John tragically passed away also happened to be the fifth birthday of his child Noah. Though Noah is the only child John and Amy had together, John had three other children from his previous marriage. When John was first rushed to the hospital, his first concern was ruining his fourth child's birthday. According to Amy, John was in so much pain the final time she saw him, he couldn't bring himself to speak. Amy told her husband that she loved him, and he told her he loved her back using sign language. John was then rushed into the emergency room. A little while later, Amy has recalled hearing the term code blue over the hospital intercom, at which point she became suspicious things might not be going her husband's way. In a relatively short amount of time, John was dead. The passing of the television legend came as a massive surprise. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of John Ritter? Let us know in the comments section below.